Welcome everybody, this is the Weekend 10, this is the uh, flagship, this is where we're going to get started, the very first one. I don't really know if flagship's the word I was actually looking for, but it sounded right, so <laughs> I don't we're know rolling with it. But, okay. Anyway, I'm Sam, uh, I'm the sports editor at the Shorthorn, and uh, we'll be running uh, a Weekend 10 every Friday. Um, you can check it out on theshorthorn.com uh, under the bullpen. Uh, come on in, check us out, and uh, listen to us for about 10 minutes, we'll BS, we'll talk about uh, some good UTA uh, sports talk about some NFL, talk about whatever. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce uh, my cohorts, uh, my uh, commanders-in-chief here. Uh, first to my left will be uh, Vin. Vin, could you introduce yourself a little bit? How's it going, fellows and ladies, if you are listening to this? Uh, my name is Vin. I'm the managing editor of the Shorthorn, a uh, sports fanatic of all kinds. Be- love the love baseball, love football, love everything. <laughs> Trying to get into UTA as much as possible. Really want to root for our basketball and, ba- and you know all our teams. And uh, hope we have a great season. Finish out strong. And uh, looking forward to the baseball season. Uh, side note on that: Vin is a Yankees fan. Oops, uh, for all the <laughs> my B. fans. Listening. Actually, I'm not apologizing for that. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, and to my right here, you play uh, to we win have the, game. Uh, the expert of all things men's basketball. Uh, BFF with head coach Scott Cross. That is Josh Bowe right here. Josh? Hi, I'm Josh Bowe, uh, men's basketball writer here for the Shorthorn and other sports writer here filling in whenever we need some other sports to be covered over here at the Shorthorn. Um, I guess I can sum up my sports fandom in, in uh, one sentence. Uh, I have almost broken my hand over a Mavericks game, so let's just leave it at that. Numerous yeah. times? <laughs> Numerous times, yes. <laughs> well, right on. Well, you didn't have any of that last night. Uh both Mavs, in fact, won, uh, kicking it off Wednesday all night. All three of them. Uh, all three, actually. That's right. Three Mavs. Uh, first of all, at home at Texas Hall, uh, UTA took down those uh, Corpus Christi, hated rival Corpus you know, Christi yeah, Islanders. I, I saw this post about uh, you know, this, P- this Pittsburgh Craigslist ad. To the, you see that uh, where this guy advertised for one one bedroom, one squ- square foot apartment on Revis Island. And I was I felt like we left the Islanders on that <laughs> island today. <laughs> Revis Island. <laughs> um, yeah, we took our business real well. Um, had a slow start, I guess, in the first half. And I'll let Josh get into that more. Um, but, you know, we ended up killing off in the second half and really dumping those Islanders and evening our conference record. It's because they're on Revis Island. Yeah, you know I well, mean, they're lonely. It, they're both kind of similar teams. Uh, UTA lost all their starters, and Marquez Haynes, third leading scorer in the nation last year, Southland Conference Player of the Year. The Islanders lost Kevin Palmer, who averaged about 20 points per game last year. So both teams are kind of on the rebound. But in the second half, UTA just shut it down. Uh, just they wouldn't allow the Islanders to get any offensive rhythm. A 32 to eight run to close out the game. That's un- unbelievable. Just that's uh, how Coach Cross likes his team to play, defense, 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 and hopefully they'll make some shots, and they did in the second half. Yeah, Cameron Catlett actually came in off the bench uh, in that game and kind of proved uh, why he was a starter, or, yeah, coming into the season, why he was a starter. Um, I know that they kind of like to have a little mix between him and uh, Shaq White-Miller, who also uh, starts at point guard. Uh, what is that mix of having them both uh you know, come into the game? What do they both bring uh, that makes this team or unique over at the point guard position? Uh, well, they're the only two real true penetrators on the team. I know Lamarcus Reed likes to get into the paint, but he like I mean, he's more effective when he's spot up and shooting. So is Bo Ingram. Um, and then, of course, you know, the big guys, Brandon Edwards and Jordan Reeves, they don't really get into the paint. Bradley Gay likes to spot up and shoot. So, I mean, they're really the only two true penetrators. And Shaq White Miller, I mean, he has to penetrate, and he has to penetrate. He's a little guy, has to get in the lane. Almost like our own little J.J. Barea, but probably – not the dog of the team like uh, J.J. Barea is. But, yeah, I mean, they, that's what they bring. Cameron Catlett can't really shoot from the outside, so he has to get inside. And uh, Interestingly enough, uh, Scott Cross once told me that the only person in practice to give Marquez Haynes trouble one-on-one was Cameron Catlett. So there's that for you. Whatever, Take there that with you what you will. Right on. Well, I guess you could say, I don't know, really can compare Catlett to Jason Kidd, but <laughs> since you compared Shaq White Miller to J.J. Barea, uh, we'll kind of turn this over. Far, yeah, Johnson we're going all the way over yeah. there. So, uh, well, the Mavs uh, of the Dallas type. Um, oh, well, we're skipping our ladies, man. Are we skipping them? No, we're not we skipping them. We can come them. back to them. Just All right. We can move on. I, we, I thought we were <laughs> staying local. We can go wherever. We can go local. We can bounce wherever. There's no rules in this thing. <laughs> see, you're confined. I'm sorry. I just I, I wanted to give some love to the ladies. They got a much-needed win. Uh, Tamara Simmons, both seniors, her and Shayla Martin, stepped up big time. Each scored 18 points, pulled out a great victory over the court of you know, the Islanders again as well. They were playing at Corpus Christi. 
Uh, much needed win, I really think. I mean, we're, we're still only got a few wins, but um, we're, we're, we're our record is what six and twenty five now overall. <laughs> no, we're five and eleven. No, combined. Good... No, our combined record might be, might be. Too many numbers. I love stats, but not too much. Hey, stats are all good, but hey, at least we're two and two in conference. That's all that matters. They're still yep. hanging around. You know, Shaylin and Tamara are leading the way. Um, so you know, Coach Morrow uh, takes it one game at a time. A win's a win. Got to got to take care of the ball though. Got yeah. it. 20 turnovers every single game, averaging 22 a game. That's, that's it's, tough. T- it's tough to win when you average that many turnovers. But we're well, moving on because Saturday is just a warm up to Sunday, which is the day that I've been waiting for all week um, to see the two teams. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That I uh, predicted uh, pre playoffs to be in the Super Bowl: uh, Green Bay and Pittsburgh. Although they're not really. I, uh, I didn't see that in writing, but I'll take Sam's word for it. I did. Uh, uh, it's just one of those words that you got to take. I, I said it. You say like, oh, okay. As opposed to some other words. Just, so just one of those words you got to take. Uh, it, um, it was. A, what do the Bears have to do to you know take down that juggernaut? Oh my god! I mean, it's, you know, it's really you know, there's so many keys to obviously winning a game. They're really well known for their defense. Over you know, we, they do have Jay Cutler on. They have some weapons on the offensive side and on special teams with Devin Hester. But I think I mean, as cliche as it sounds, getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. He's a really mobile quarterback. I really think they have to have somebody spy on him at all points in, in case he evades the, you know the pocket. Gets because he makes a lot of plays with his feet. He's really good at throwing on the run. Something you got to really look out for. Um, I'm sure Erlacher is going to have his eyes on him at all the points. Um, they got a great defense. I, they, I really think they got to give a lot of pressure, put a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers. But I just think they're receiving core uh, and, and Aaron Rodgers. And they got a decent running back. They found that rookie guy. Finally stepped up. Somebody stepped up in the playoffs, no, no, no less. And um, I think the I think I think the Packers pull it out. Proud of UConn, James Starks. Josh, to you, Packers, Bears, what's your take? See, I think I think the thing about the Packers is, is yeah, they, they're they a wild card team, they're a sixth seed, but they're predicted to go to the Super Bowl by a lot of people, and the only reason why they didn't get to that regular season mark that they wanted to is because injuries. I mean, so other, than the, other than the Cowboys, what other team saw the, these kind of injuries that decimate a team in key spots like the Packers? And they still, still make the playoffs of the sixth seed. So, honestly, it might be a little, you know, they're supposed to be the underdog, but I don't think they are. I, even though the Bears are at home, and I know Chicago, that place is going to be nuts, Soldier Field. But the Packers play the Packers play outdoors all the time. They know how to handle cold weather. I mean, Rogers, come on, Wisconsin. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. And and they got just enough defense. They got possibly oh, the best, the best defensive yes. player of the year this year. Clay Matthews, former defensive player of the year, Charles Woodson. I think I they think, have the best defense in the NFL. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, they give them a few points Steelers. in the secondary, I think, but. Well, don't discount the Bears' defense. Right. I mean, personally, yeah. to me, this Bears' defense uh, reminds me a lot of the 07 Giants' defense. Um, and even the whole team of the Bears looks kind of like the 07 Giants. You know, they got a ferocious front four. Remember how, you know, boss human Yora was that year, getting every every single play there, you know, had pressure on the quarterback. Uh, that allows them to drop, you know, seven guys back into coverage every single play. Uh, and you throw in Brian Erlacher, who's like the best middle linebacker at coverage uh, in the NFL. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers is going to have to beat him. You know, I mean, he's... He is one of the best quarterbacks, and he could he can beat him. But the Bears are going to make him actually be on his game and beat him. Uh, Cut, Cutler's a wild arm guy. Cutler's wild not the card. reason. Yeah, he's not the reason the Bears have gotten there. Uh, but he's the he has the cannon to win playoff games. Um, and you know, like I said, NFL's crazy. Nobody thought the you know the Patriots would you know, lose to the Jets. Uh, and sure enough, it happened. So stay yeah, up in I mind. Think, I think yeah. the thing that. If you ask every Chicago Bears fan right now that they're most worried about, is they're worried that they're going to see 2009. Jay Keller could just pop up at any moment. I think they're terrified of that possibility. And I mean, early you saw in the season, he threw four picks to one cornerback. He threw to, what's his way, Dante Hall, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just Hall. D'Angelo Hall. Dante Hall, I'm going way back. I'm going way back. KC, retirement right here. The Priest Holmes <laughs> trend. Back uh, in the day, Priest Holmes from UT. Yeah. Running back kicks, dog. <laughs> All right, so moving on, get back on task here. Jets and Steelers, uh, speaking of uh, those Jets. Um, they had the, you know, the us against the world mentality. Um, everybody picked the Pats to beat them. They came in and beat them. Um, they exercised their demons against the Colts. They exercised that demon against the Patriots. What do they have to prove against the Steelers? First, it was personal against the Colts, as you know, famous what do you call Rex Ryan, so so beautifully put. And then against the Pats, it was you know a big divisional foe. They got all this stuff in bad blood between them. And now they got the Steelers. You know, they they beat them. Up, you know, what was it two weeks ago when they. I think I saw this stat that, you know, ben, Big Ben Roethlisberger is 4-1 and one against Rex Ryan coach defenses. And his one loss was the last game they played, which is... 22-17. It was week 16. There you go. Um, they really caused him a lot of trouble. It got in his face. I, never, I, saw, I saw him eat the dirt so often. 
And that's something that's going to have to happen again. I really think they're going to have to get a lot of pressure on. Um, I don't. I'm not so. I'm not so confident outside of Mike Wallace for the receiver core for the Steelers. Um, and I'm sure Revis Island's going to be occupying that general area. Um, I like the Jets and I really like the Steelers, but there's something about the Jets that you know they have this kind of like bulldog and just kind of this annoying kind of bug that won't gonna won't go away kind of mentality. And I think they're going to pull it off over the Steelers. I just think the Steelers are just too. They, they, you know, they won recently, and I just think it's, it's about time the Jets pulled it off. There's been a lot of hype. I really don't want to see Mark Sanchez win because I don't think he's earned it. I don't think he's that good a quarterback. I really don't. I don't know what it is, but I think they can pull it off. So you're saying the Steelers won't lose, but the Jets will just win. Exactly. See, the thing is, though, I don't think the Jets have... Plus, uh, the, what do you call it, the two offensive tackles for the Steelers were not injured uh, yeah. in the last game, but they're, supposed, they're reported to be starting. They're going to be starting this weekend. I don't know. Flozell Adams, I remember him playing for the Cowboys. Fall start machine. I don't know what he's going to yeah, have. What's going to be started on Flozell. I think the thing about the Steelers, though, is that the Jets haven't seen a defense like this in the playoffs yet. The Colts, de- I mean, they could barely score against the Colts defense, which isn't that great. And I know they put up some good numbers against the Patriots defense, but I think if you asked anybody what the worst part of the Patriots was, it would be their defense. I mean, this is a different animal that they're going to be seeing. Uh, it's going to be aggressive. They're, I mean, they're not going to let Mark Sanchez beat him. I mean, but the thing is, is if you would have told me last week, you know, who are you going to count on to win a game? You know, Mark Sanchez versus Tom Brady. Mark Sanchez outperformed Tom Brady down the stretch. I mean, that's ridiculous. It shouldn't happen. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he can prove it again against Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, my take, I'm, I'm, I'm the one going Steelers on this. Uh, and my, my train of thought is the Steelers are consistent as they come. Um, you know, the Steelers replace their defensive teams in and out. Their players go in and out. But the system and the program remains the same. Uh, their defense is feared every single year, no matter what. And you add Troy Polamalu into the mix, who's the most dynamic safety in all of football, who just seems to always be there and always make a play um, in the right time. Um, he's built for the playoffs. Uh, and this is exactly the type of situation that the Steelers needed was the Jets. The Steelers can't beat the Patriots. I think the biggest thing for the Steelers was that the Jets beat the Patriots. Um, because, the, you know, the kryptonite for the Steelers is Tom Brady and the Patriots. They've never been able to really beat them. Um, but like I said, with the Steelers, you know, Joey Porter, like, used to run that linebacking core a couple years, and everybody thought that, oh, it was all about Joey Porter and the Steelers. He goes off to Miami, they replace him with, what, Lamar Woodley. Who's that guy? Comes in and, you know, he becomes one of the, you know, stalwart of that, yeah, stalwart of that Steelers D. It doesn't matter who they have, the Steelers are back. Um, I predict Steelers to win. I predict Steelers to even win the Super Bowl. Um, but that's further down the road. I think Big Ben will get his third ring, and people are going to be ticked off because nobody likes Big Ben anymore, it seems. Um, but that's what happens when you uh, – all, all pregame <laughs> stuff so far, anyway, you know, all the media on. has showed, you know, just been basically like Big Ben, like, you know, basically praising the hell out of Rex Ryan. It's like, oh, man, he beat Tom Brady, he paid Manning. How the hell am I going to do it? It's all farce. It's going to be a great game. Uh, so moving on, we're running out of time here so far. We'll get to some notes real quick. The moving Mavs, um, national champion uh, contenders every single year, are going to face two uh, other uh, national champions. Last year's champ, uh, champion Illinois, fighting Illini, uh, and the the Ru- Wisconsin Whitewater, who uh, demolished the Dallas Mavericks professional team uh, earlier this season. So that'll be rough to look, something to kind of keep track of. Uh, you can check it out on the Shorthorn on Monday. Um, track teams. Men's and women's track teams are going to go uh, run in the Oklahoma Sooner Open. Uh, I believe Cordero Gray uh, is one. Uh, you know, he's an All-American. He's he's Olympic bound, Olympic uh, Olympic hopeful, uh, and he's looking to kind of make some waves uh, in that regard. Yeah, I mean, they had a good they had a good meet last weekend, and uh, that was against Big Twelve competition. They're going to see a lot more Big Twelve competition this weekend, so I'm going to see if they can repeat repeat it again. Right on. Uh, men's tennis, one more note. They uh, play at TCU. Uh, I know you're all stoked for that. So let's see what... Uh, Can't wait. Yeah, we'll see if they oh, can kind of right pull some things out, <laughs> pull some wins, and uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, Vin, final thoughts on uh, the first uh, Weekend uh, 10 podcast. I'm also going to say Weekend 15 podcast in case we had too much time. We may just kind of transfer this to a Weekend 15. So, um, your final thoughts on the first Weekend 15 podcast. Uh Look forward to it every week. Love talking sports with any fellas. If you guys have any comments, please be sure to leave them. If you don't agree the Jets are going to be the Steelers, let me know why. Or you just think my ideas are stupid, which is totally fine, because that's what I do with Sports Talk Radio when I hear, you know, Colin Coward talk. Um, look forward to talking to you guys every weekend. And uh, please read the short horn.
and visit shorehorn.com. Josh, final thoughts. Uh, sorry, sorry we didn't get to what I thought was the biggest news that I'm sure you guys thought. Mavs beating Lakers. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just joking with you. UTA, all you UTA <laughs> faithful out there. Hey. Uh, but, uh, yeah, keep tuning in. Uh, we'll keep doing this. If you guys like it, we'll give us ideas, maybe how we can improve it. If you want to see maybe different kind of segments, uh, let us know. This is, this is your show, not our show. Let us know what you guys want. Uh, like I said, we'll be here every Friday. You know, click on us. It actually be up probably Thursday night, but you know, we say Friday just in case you don't you don't get online at night. Uh, but every Friday Solid morning night. when you get yeah when you get here, um, I know you don't want to sit through classes on Friday. Uh, if you want to just kind of you know play this podcast on low while you're sitting in class, I don't condone that, but it would be okay I if it. you did. I condone it. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, we're signing off for week one. Um, you guys take care. Let us know. Uh, give us some feedback, and uh, we'll holler at you guys later. Cheers. Peace.